Hello, I just want to show you an easy way to make some energy in the Feed the Beast mod pack. I am using two machines from the thermal expansion mod, the Magma Crucible and the Magmatic Engine. And these will make the netherrake into the lava, and lava we can use to make energy in a geothermal generator from industrial craft. And it will generate 20 EUs per tick, which is pretty nice. So how do we make this? This is kind of like a mid-game system. You have to go to the nether first, but it's not terribly expensive. We need some iron, gold, silver, tin, copper and redstone. And some glass, cobble, planks, rubber for the cable and cactus green for the waterproof pipe. Waterproof piping. And then we need a lot of netherrack because that's our fuel. <coughs> the, uh, make the crucible. So how do we make this? First we need a machine frame which is iron in the corners, gold in the middle and glass. Then we need a redstone reception coil which is just gold with two redstone. Then we can make our magma crucible with machine frame, the red reception coil, and then two copper ingots, two nether brick and a bucket. And you don't actually need to find a nether fortress because you can just take three nether rack and put it in a compressor and this will make nether brick. Next we need our engine. This is iron ingots with tin around. This will make two tin gears. And silver ingot with redstone will make a redstone transmission coil. Then we make our engine with the transmission coil, the tin gears, a vanilla piston and some tin, tin ingots. And then we need our geothermal generator. First we need a battery, this is just redstone and tin and a copper cable. Then we need a machine block which is just 8 refined iron. And then we put a machine block with a normal furnace and a battery. This will make a normal generator. And we need some empty cells which is just 10 ingots like this. And then we can upgrade our generator to a geothermal generator by putting some refined iron, some empty cells and some glass. Then I'm also going to put some wooden transport pipe, iron transport pipe and golden waterproof pipe and some other stuff here. <coughs> Let me show you how to make this. First we set our magma crucible here and the engine on top or you can put the engine anywhere you want. The orange side is the output but you can change which side is the output down here if you want. I'm just gonna leave it there. So we output the lava here and put it back into the engine to run the engine. And then we can put our geothermal generator here. Then we can put a chest here if we want. One stack of netherrack will actually power it for 50 minutes or so, so it's but it's nice to have an automated system. So we we'll put some redstone torch there and let's see. Oh this is my redstone engine, it's here. So like this. Then we put our wood pipe like this. Then we need to turn our engine. We can use this hammer. So now we need some nether work. Like this. So it will uh, pump the nether right here, and the iron pipe prevents it from going into the engine. And then we'll go down here in the uh, oops, the magma crucible. 
and somewhere it will go back in the chests but that's fine because when the magma crucible is full we don't want it to pop out of the uh, pipes we want it to go back into the chest and then we need one thing I forgot we need one lava bucket to start it so that should have been in here one lava bucket to set the engine off and this type of engine doesn't need any redstone signal in fact if it gets a redstone signal it will shut down so now this uh, thing is uh, taking some power here in my minecraft duels I think they're called MJ's let's look at the recipes here netherrack takes 4000 MJ's to create one bucket of lava a thousand milli buckets this is the smallest liquid measurement in the game milli buckets you can also use cobblestone stone obsidian but this takes five times as much energy so this will not be feasible for this system you will need too many engines and they won't generate enough lava for this so it has to be near the rack so let's see this this engine will output uh, four mjs per tick when it's up to 1100 degrees so four, th four mjs per tick that's 80 per second so that will be 50 seconds for one bucket of lava this thing will actually use one bucket of lava every 50 seconds so that balances out but then uh, we have to take into account the lava that the engine uses as well it uses one bucket of lava in 225 seconds so that's 4.4 milli buckets per second so actually one engine is if you want power 100% of the time you use 20 EUs per tick then uh, one engine is not enough you'll have to put another engine like this and uh, connect it like this but most of the time if you if you use this system in your base for your macerator and your furnace and stuff then you won't then you put an MFE here or a bat box and you won't use power all the time so one engine will actually be enough but one problem with this system is uh, th these engines will never explode so that's good but if we like here if we don't use any power then this fills up it can hold uh, 25 buckets of lava so it takes a while to fill up but when we don't use any power it will fill up the pipes and everything will come to a halt because this engine when it's running without doing anything then it overheats and it shuts down so we have to use this uh, crescent hammer from thermal expansion just to right click it and give it a whack and this uh, hammer let's see how we make this hammer it's pretty easy we make the hammer just by silver ingot and three iron but that's kind of a problem that it stops when we're not there we want it to run all the time so later in the game when you got a few more resources we can actually prevent it from stopping we can use something like this and gold or gate let me get some of these and I'm gonna need some red pipe wire like this these things you actually make in an assembly table later in the game one of these and this requires iron five uh, if diamond I mean five diamonds some obsidian and then you need to power these tables with, with lasers which takes even more diamonds and then you need to power the lasers with engines so it's a bit complicated but you'll get there eventually then you can use these all gates we put one here next to the generator and we put one here next to the engine then we take our red pipe wire and add it to the outside of the 
pipe. Let's see. That that's that's good. Then we can actually go into the uh, the one next to the generator, and uh, we see if we want to. S let's see if the tank is full. That is the generator. If this is full, we want it to send out a red pipe signal. So it sends out a signal in this wire. We can see it's it's on now. Then we want this one to say if we get a red pipe signal, then we want to send a red stone signal. So this sends a red pipe signal up here, and this sends a red stone signal, which shuts down the engine whenever this is full of lava. So if we then use some power, let's grab some MFE like this now we're using a lot of power here and this should turn off when the uh, engine is, it might take a while but um let's see what else we can do yo instead of generating eus we might want to generate some mj some minecraft jewels with the for buildcraft and we can do this over here instead of a instead of the geothermal generator i'm pumping the lava into some more magmatic engines one engine over here can actually power three engines over here so this gives us uh, 12 MJs per tick which is pretty nice because this is just a redstone energy cell this is just a kind of battery for MJs like a, like batteries for EUs this is a kind of battery but instead of this we could put a quarry here because 12 MJs is actually exactly what a quarry needs to run at full speed so these three, this system could run a, a quarry at full speed. This is pretty nice. And here this is the laser setup I was talking about. This is another use we can use this for. Three engines power three lasers, which power this assembly table, which makes our gold ore gate we can use for the pipes. Then I went a little crazy here to show you what you can do. You can actually uh, add some more engines here, and then you can add some more generators. Two generate two engines can power two generators, unless you use them 100% of the time. Then you need three engines, and here I have four engines powering three generators 100% of the time, so that's 60 MJs per tick. And then I have the same thing two more times here, so I have 180 M, uh, EUs per tick, not MJs, EUs. I put uh, this into an MFSU, and then I use this to power a matter fabricator from the Greg Tech. And this screen creates UU matter from scrap, and it takes a lot of energy. Normally, you would make a nuclear reactor for this because. It, it can generate more energy than this can, but at least this takes uh, one hour, 15 minutes for one UU matter, and that's, I think that's pretty good, considering I have, haven't used any nuclear reactor. So, thank you for watching, I just, oh, uh, over here I, I made another crazy thing, if you put four engines here, then you can actually power 14 engines here. And then you can get 56 MJs per tick. I don't know what you need it for, but it's pretty cool. So thank you for watching. I hope you uh, can use these uh, systems for your own base.